New England has a really interesting mix of roller coasters. The region has some classic wood coasters, seven different mountain coasters, and some award winners at both Lake Compounds and Six Flags New England. Growing up and living in Massachusetts, I have managed to ride almost every roller coaster in Massachusetts, Connecticut, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, and I'd say Rhode Island, but that poor state doesn't have any permanent roller coasters. In this video, I will rank every single roller coaster currently operating or standing but not operating in New England. That will mean there will be several kitty coasters on this list, so skip to number 30 if you don't want to hear about them. Before starting the countdown, I want to note the two in New England I have not ridden. First, I have not been on the Roadrunner roller coaster at Ocean Beach Park, as the rides were closed when I tried visiting the park earlier this year. And I also have not been on the Kitty Powered Coaster at the new Runway Fun Park that opened last September. But based on clones I've ridden at other parks, these two rides would have placed third and fourth from the bottom. Number 44, Orient Express at Palace Playland. This Wisdom Rides Kitty Coaster is currently in pieces, and I honestly hope it never gets reassembled. This is among the roughest and jerkiest kitty coasters out there. Number 43, Wildcat at Lake Compounds. This classic PTC coaster was recently retracted by Martin and Flamenx and received brand new GCI Millennium Flyers, so you'd think the ride would be smooth, but somehow this retracking made the coaster rougher. It is now one of the worst coasters in the world. The ride jackhammers violently throughout the course. There's no airtime. You should have the occasionally painful laterals and non-stop shaking. It's unfortunate this historic coaster is so brutal because it looks great in the center of Lake Compounds. Number 42, Kitty Coaster Lake Compounds. Adults are not permitted to ride this Molina and Sons creation, but I rode it as a kid. It has a simple layout even by Kitty Coaster standards, but I do remember it being a little jerky. Number 41, Wacky Mouse at York's Wild Kingdom. This wacky worm is smooth and comfortable, but it moves at a glacial rate even compared to most other kitty coasters. Number 40, Little Dipper Quasi. This Herschel Little Dipper coaster has more tenacity than the prior kitty coasters on this list. You'll get some pull over the bunny hill. However, this one does have hard metal seats, and because it is a bit bumpy, it can rough you up. Number 39, Goliath at Six Flags New England. This Facoma Giant Inverted Boomerang will likely never operate again. With the original trains, this ride would have placed in the top 10. But with the Premier trains, this coaster was a torture machine. The first drop was still incredible, giving a true freefall sensation. And I admired the ride's intensity, but it beat you up. The bulky over the shoulder restraints gave headbanging, the restraints would crush your thighs in the high G segments, and then the final stop in the vertical lift was a ball buster. Number 38, Great Chase at Six Flags New England. This Myler Kitty Coaster is decent. This one offers no airtime, but the Helix and Final Turn offer some laterals due to the minimal banking. Number 37, Troublesome Trucks Runaway Coaster at Edaville Family Theme Park. This Samperla Speedy Coaster is quite a bit larger than the prior Kitty Coasters. This one is lightly themed to Thomas the Tank Engine, and while it is still a little janky, the final bunny hills do give some itty bitty pops of airtime. Number 36, Dragon Coaster at Canopy Lake Park. This Zamperla powered coaster is one of the region's best kitty coasters. It's very smooth, and you build up some appreciable speed in the helixes, so you'll get some solid laterals there. Number 35, Poogie Penguin Spin Out at Santa's Village. This is the larger three-loop model from SBF Visa, but I find the spinning coaster does not spin as much as the smaller ones. It's still better than your average kitty coaster, though. Number 34, Wipeout at Palace Playland. This is the smaller two-loop SBF Visa spinning coaster. This one had decent spinning and a cool facade that you go through. Number 33, the Spinning Ladybug Coaster at Edaville Family Theme Park. This is another SBF Visa spinner. This one spins similarly to Wipeout, but this one has a cycle that's twice as long. For me, that's a positive. Number 32, Orient Express at Fun World Game Center. 
This is the region's best kiddie coaster. The indoor setting makes this ride. You are surrounded by mirrors, and I'm pretty sure you can hit the walls and roof if you raise your hands. The claustrophobic setting is very dizzying. And you also have a helix around a Pinocchio statue, so theming. There is one bad jerk into the station, but the ride is otherwise comfortable. Number 31, Catwoman's Whip at Six Flags New England. This Zier large Tivoli coaster is most notable for having a super long 20 car train. If you ride in the back cars, you get some nice whip and laterals on the first two drops. The rest of the ride is pretty dull though, but it is a nice step up from a kiddie coaster. Number 30, Rudy's Rapid Transit Coaster at Santa's Village. This is the exact same ride as Catwoman's Whip, except this one is a cool Rudolph lead car and it gives two laps. Number 29, Canopy Corkscrew at Canopy Lake Park. This ride is slated for removal, but because it was still standing for the 2021 season, I decided to include it. This arrow looper has a simple layout, but the first drop gives a good pop of ejector airtime. Now the turns are very jerky, but the corkscrews were okay, and you had some nice head choppers with the trees. Number 28, the Polar Coaster at Storyland. This Hopkins coaster is built in the side of a hill, and the layout reminds me of a cross between a mine train and a wild mouse coaster. You slowly snake your way down the hill, and then you have a decent finale. You have a fun helix and an elongated speed hill over the water. The ride isn't thrilling, but it is smooth, and I absolutely love this coaster's adorable walrus trains. And the igloo-themed station is cool too. Number 27, Flashback at Six Flags New England. This Vacoma boomerang is average for the model. There's some head banging on the Cobra roll, but the inversions do deliver strong positive Gs, and the elements are particularly dizzying in reverse. Then the initial plunge is always fun, giving a tummy tickling sensation. Number 26, Zoomerang at Lake Compounds. This is one of the smoothest boomerangs out there, which is why I place it one spot ahead of Flashback. It rides identically from a force perspective, you just don't hit your head nearly as often. Number 25, Gotham City Gauntlet at Six Flags New England. This Mauer Wild Mouse is decent. My most recent ride had less braking than usual, which resulted in great laterals and one or two small pops of airtime. This is a basic layout, but it has its merits. Number 24, Wild Mouse at Funtown USA. This is another Mauer Wild Mouse, but I give this one the edge because it is a little smoother and less likely to trim you in that first half. Number 23, Skyrider at Urban Air Adventure Park. Now this may be a debatable one, but I do consider the zipline coaster a roller coaster. It feels like a suspended coaster. You have some small dips, but what makes this ride wild is the swinging and spinning. If you get a running start, which you're allowed to do, you can swing to the horizontal, which is really freaky in such an open ride vehicle. And there's one turn where it feels like you're going to smack a building support. I had to pull my legs back every time. You can also spin throughout, which causes some bizarre centripetal forces, especially if you're swinging simultaneously. I've written the version in Massachusetts, but they also have locations in Maine and Connecticut. Number 22, Sea Viper at Palace Playland. This Preston coaster looks huge at the very back of the park. The first two drops have okay whip towards the back, but the highlights are the third and fourth drops. Both have strong laterals and whip. The final helix is a bit shaky, but the rest of the ride tracks quite smoothly, and this is a solid coaster for a boardwalk park. Number 21, Mountain Coaster at Cranmore Mountain Adventure Park. This vegan model is my least favorite mountain coaster in the region, and actually least favorite mountain coaster overall, but it's still enjoyable. This one is built in a hill, but the ride space is pretty open. There just aren't many trees to conceal the layout as you head down the hill. The downhill bit has decent speed, but you don't get any airtime or strong laterals in this one. Number 20, Riddler Revenge at Six Flags New England. Until a few years ago, this was in contention for one of the worst coasters in New England. But Six Flags invested in new trains with the Vacoma vests that eliminate all headbanging. The ride is still shaky, but I can appreciate the fast-paced and aggressive inversions when I'm not getting my skull bashed in. There's nothing wrong with the SLC layout, 
It has always been the execution that's the issue. Number 19, Untamed at Canopy Lake Park. This Gerslauer Eurofighter packs a solid punch. It has a great beyond vertical drop that gives some serious ejector airtime. And then you get some hang time on both the vertical loop and especially that final inline twist. The ride does have some jerky transitions, particularly on the entrance into the helix and the cutback, so watch out for headbanging. Number 18, Mountain Coaster at Gunstock Mountain Resort. This is another vegan mountain coaster. This one is tucked amongst the trees. There may not be any airtime in this one, but there are decent laterals, and you can get pitch black night rides and snowy winters, which is a cool experience. Number 17, Thunderbolt at Six Flags New England. This classic wood coaster has one elite moment. There's this strong objector bunny hill on the backside of the ride. Meanwhile, the rest of the ride has more mild pops of airtime scattered about, including a fun double down. The ride's pretty darn smooth, but I just wish it ran with buzz bars like it used to. Number 16, the Yankee Cannonball at Canopy Lake Park. The signature attraction at Canopy is this Herb Schmeck designed wood coaster, and it runs along the parking lot. This one still has buzz bars, which means you have several inches of room for airtime. Just too bad there isn't much anymore. GCI retract this coaster in the 2015-2016 offseason, and while it severely weakened the ride's airtime, it is smoother than ever, which is a plus considering it's 90 plus years old. In the past, you used to get nice airtime in every hill. Now you only get moderate pops on a few hills. Number 15, Batman the Dark Knight at Six Flags New England. This is a compact Bolger and Mabillard floorless coaster. The ride is fairly smooth, and you have some decent inversions, most notably the awesome Zero-G roll. The hang time in that element is incredible. And then the final two corkscrews are decently snappy to contrast. Number 14, Pandemonium at Six Flags New England. This Gerslauer spinning coaster has solid spinning, particularly on the helixes and finale. Then you also have a few solid drops, especially if you get to take them sideways or in reverse. Number 13, Joker at Six Flags New England. This SNS free spin is a solid ride. The flipping is more plentiful on the green side, but the flips are better timed on the purple side. I love how the top section violently flips you after the first drop, and if you can manage to get a flip on a raven turn, an occurrence that seems to happen on the purple side more frequently, you're in for a treat. This ride is a disorienting blur, and unlike any other coaster in New England. Number 12, Mountain Coaster at Jimney Peak. This was my first mountain coaster, so it's been a while since I last rode it. This vegan model has an incredible wooded setting, and that's also the ride's strength, but you also have several turns with solid laterals, and a few smaller drops with tiny pops of airtime. Number 11, Beast Mountain Coaster at Killington Resort. This is the first of three aquatic development mountain coasters you can find in New England. The descent is fairly secluded on this one, and it builds up good speed. The laterals are fine on this one, but this one excels in the length department. Number 10, Timber Ripper Mountain Coaster at Okimo Mountain Resort. This one starts and ends strong. You have some powerful laterals during the initial section and also on the finale. It feels like you'll flip off the track. The middle section does have bad pacing though. You have this really awkward and long straightaway where you lose all your speed. Number 9, Phobia Fear Coaster at Lake Compounds. This is one of the best Premier Ride Skyrocket 2 clones because this one has just lap bars. This one has the familiar launch sequence with some moderate launches and that leads into an exciting sequence. You get powerful ejector airtime ascending the tower. Then you get tons of hang time on this super slow barrel roll high above the ground. And then you get wicked laterals and ejector airtime on the descent. This is one ride I don't mind seeing cloned because it's a rapid blitz of forces. Number 8, Thunderbolt Mountain Coaster at Berkshire East. This is a very long mountain coaster in western Massachusetts. This is another one from Aquatic Development Group, and it features a wonderful blend of strong laterals and a half dozen pops of airtime. Add in the usually great wooded setting, and you have a ride that's worth seeking out. Number 7, Nor'easter Mountain Coaster at Atash Mountain Resort. 
the best mountain coaster in New England, is also from Aquatic Development Group. This one has a long downhill portion along a densely wooded mountain, and this one is super fast. It is loaded with tight turns delivering wicked laterals and positive Gs. Then you also have several drops giving good pops of airtime, including a pretty large one under the lift hill midway through the ride. Number 6. Wooden Warrior Quasi. This was the original Junior Gravity Group wood coaster, and this ride is super smooth, but despite its small stature, it has several good pops of airtime. The airtime is more sustained towards the back, but you'll be coming out of your seat no matter where you sit. Number 5. Excalibur at Funtown USA. This custom Coasters International Woody has an amazing setting. The coaster is tucked in the woods, and thanks to recent track work, Excalibur is running pretty darn smoothly right now, and the ride rips through its course. It gives a nice combination of airtime and laterals. The first half front loads the airtime. The large drops deliver nice floater airtime in the back, while the front gets more aggressive airtime pops going into the turnarounds. But Excalibur is one of the best coasters for laterals. Those turnarounds offer solid laterals, but Excalibur delivers some of the most sustained laterals of any coaster in the second half in its figure eight finale. Number four, Rorosaurus at Storyland. This coaster may be just 40 feet or 12 meters tall, but it has a dozen airtime moments, and there's strong airtime moments too. This Junior Gravity Group wood coaster has more power than the other ones. The finale in particular feels like the one in Steel Vengeance as the four consecutive bunny hills will aggressively fling you from your seat. I cannot believe this ride was built at a children's park, but I'm certainly not complaining. The turns do have a light shake to them, but the super comfortable Timberliner trains absorb the blows effortlessly. Number 3. Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England New England's only RMC is a great ride. The old wooden Cyclone was converted into an aggressive airtime machine. The first half features an amazing first drop, a super forceful overbank that causes me to gray out and several other hills loaded with ejector airtime, the strongest being on that outward banked hill. Then you also have three inversions with great hang time. The coaster does lose speed in the final lap, but the coaster still finds way to get you out of your seat. The rise of frenetic blitz of elements, and it's the perfect complement to the park's number one. Number two, Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England. This is the region's lone hyper coaster and it's running better than it has in a long time. The coaster received new wheels in 2019, and it's now running faster than it has since the mid-2000s. This coaster is one of the best layouts ever devised. The first half is an out-and-back coaster with powerful, sustained ejector airtime along the river. The third and fourth hills in particular are two of the best hills on any coaster. Then the second half is a twister with quicker pops of airtime, plus strong positive G's in the helixes. Most people have an issue with the bulky restraints, but I actually don't mind them because I can still fully experience this coaster's airtime and forces. And coming in at number one is Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds. New England's best coaster is yet another with an incredible setting. The coaster is built on a heavily wooded mountainside. This creates some incredible visuals as you whiz past trees by day and then by night, there is no light on the mountain, which makes this one of the world's best night rides. This CCI also has an amazing layout. The pacing and sense of speed is truly top notch. You have plenty of airtime. Most of it is of the floater variety, with the highlight being the endless series of bunny hills on the return run. But you do have two ejector pops on the outward leg as well. And then you can also get some sneaky laterals despite this ride being an out and back coaster. The ride can be bumpy if you ride further back in the train, but my advice is to ride up front where the airtime is best anyway. So that is how I rank every single roller coaster currently standing in New England. What are your favorite coasters in New England? Or thoughts on any of the rides featured on this list? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.